Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Jesse, and then in today's tutorial, we're learning about how to run HTML programs using Julia. That is when you are with the Julia REPL repo. repo. So, for example, let's say you have a file and you want to run it. There are two ways. Either you can go into the shell mode by clicking on the colon, the, the semicolon and colon, and then you move to whatever file you want to write. So, let's say you want to check for the IP address, IP config, right? You can do this format. Then it's going to work perfectly for you like this. Okay, so like maybe you don't want this format, but you want to rather use the other format without moving to the shell. You can run it straight away with run, right? And then into bracket. So inside this bracket is what the kind of program, the standard program you want to run. You run it inside this with a back tick. A back tick is fine at the extreme of your escape, not the quotation, you know, rather back, back ticks. So you put whatever thing you want to do inside this back tick. Back ticks. <laughs> okay, so, so for example, let's say I want to run something like CMD, right? Or I want to run the program called CMD, the command prompt itself. And I run it like this is that just open for me my command prompt. So I can just do anything I want to do in my command prompt. There's a command prompt. So I just go with uh, let's say three or something like that's this. Right, it's going to list all the tasks for me so like that okay so that is so that is always so if you if i exit this i'll come back to my julia okay another way that maybe you have a, a, a file you can also run the same thing using the same thing let's say i want to run something like my calculator so cal cal dot ese right and then inside the back tick so i'll be able to open this Calculator, see that that's open for me perfectly, and I can actually use it. So, that's one of the ways you can run a script inside this. So, the calculator I open is here. Okay, so what again can you do? You can also use a normal bash or a bash or bat b a t c h bash and then bash. Okay, so for example, like if I want to run echo, so I can just put inside the say command one. Right, I'm going to put it inside it as, as a back tick like this. And let's say echo hello Julia. Right, and a back tick, put it inside this code into, into this variable, and then I'll run it like run then cmd1 the command cmd1 like this. And it's going to run perfectly for me it said hello julia the echo did not come so that's one of the ways you can do it or you can just run it straight away like this with a back tick the echo hello julia right and then it's going to also work perfectly for you so that's one of the ways there's also something called inter intercalation or like joining it together like as you do it in string so for example let's say i have a file like this let's say i can make it like file right and I have this file, let's say this file, right? There's something on it, so I want to be able to read the content of it using this run. So I can just go with this line, interpolate it and run it like run, into brackets, then cut. Cut is a normal command for bash. So cut, and then I'll interpolate it with the dollar sign and then the file. So by this format, if I run it, it's going to open this file, this file, and then read the content for me. But that is concatenated for me. So that's hello, Julia. This is Julia programming language. So that's one of the ways. That's a concept about interpolation. So interpolation can be used for several other aspects. Okay, so let's back, back to the pipe, right? So let's say I want to pipe or run several commands together. For example, let's say I have something like this. And then I want to run it like the cool hello right and I bring the sort this is how to pipe the pipe symbol and I do sort so that it's going to just run the whole thing as an echo that's not what I want so let's create a file with say file 2 let's go to random test and then if I run something like this uh, cut I want to check the content of this file to write so that you know what is on it you want to sort the things on it if 
I go like this, it's going to give it to me. Not sorted. Apple, avocado, orange, banana. These are not sorted. But I want to actually sort it. So to do that, you can if you do it like this, it's not going to still work. It's still not sorted. So that it's giving you an error. So the best way is to use the pipe pipeline function. So that's a pipeline function. So to do that, you just go with this run and then you bring the pipe pipeline. Then to bracket you put your text, your back text, and then your cut. And that is you're trying to run your command that you want to pipe it. So I'll go with file two, right? And then I'll close the tick and I'll go and open another one like sort. And I'll close it like this. So everything is correct. So that has that sorted it. Apple, avocado, banana. Blackberry corn lemon. So that is the concept about pipeline. The way to do this, you don't bring again this backslash. It's not going to still work. This symbol is what has been brought here. So that's one thing. You can also do several aspects. Like let's say you want to just print the head. Head and two. I just want to print the first two. So apple avocado. So that's the concept about pipeline in when we are running external files. So you can just use pipeline. And you put your commands inside the back text like this. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you have any questions or contributions, you can just put it inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit. Thanks for watching.